podcast by comedians, greenroomradio.net. From the Green Room Radio Studios, located next to a cornfield somewhere in central Illinois, it's the Green Room. And now, here's your host, Vilmo. It's the Green Room. It's the Green Room. Green Room Radio. Hey, everybody. You made it once again. It's the Green Room. I'm Vilmos, your host. Thank you very much for listening. The Green Room is the anchor podcast at greenroomradio.net. is also the longest-running podcast on stand-up comedy. And welcome to the uh, last comic standing after show. And joining me, as he always does, is our authorized resident civilian, super listener Scott Walker. What's going on, gang? Yeah, big night. You know, I'll say this. At least it was all stand-up, with the exception of the awful comedic bit they did in the beginning. Oh, oh my God. What was that about? Did they just have, like, four or five minutes that they didn't couldn't edit in something else? Well, I mean, no. no I mean, honestly, that joke has had to have been done somewhere. You know, the judge's room, judge's lounge, and, you know... Uh, the the other judges come out, and then one re- regular judge comes out. Really? Yeah. This is they the kind just... of genius you're looking for, uh, NBC, in your stand-up comics. Yeah, they should have just hung a sign on the door that said, "No blacks, whites only." Well, you know, I was going to tweet something about that, not the no blacks, whites only, but <clears throat> I, you are referring to JB Smoove, and the thing about it is. He's really a big winner in this, if you really think about it. He's getting a lot of face time here. And he's getting a few little jokes in here and there. People are connecting with him. And he's he's going to come out of this really well. You watch. This is a oh, great thing for him. I completely agree, yeah. Uh, though, I don't know. Are we really seeing... Him, or are we seeing a written version of of a host that is somewhat JB Smoove? Well, regardless of which one we're seeing, it's going to work out for him because he's not doing his stand up. So when people go, I, the only thing I could equate it to would be uh, people going seeing somebody they saw on a sitcom. Um, what's his name from Full House? What's his name? The Tall guy that's oh like kind of my name. Why 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 can I c- not come up with him? Here, where we got it. Drinking game starts. Uh, oh, I'm already got drunk. Something wrong. Um, I don't know why I can't remember the name. Anyway, he's a filthy comic. Uh, those oh, you, Bob Saget. Thank you, Bob Saget. Bob when Saget. He said is, filthy comic. I was like, filthy. oh, Bob Saget. Yeah, he's filthy. Uh, very funny, but filthy. And people go expecting they're going to see the gang, uh, the the dad from fa- Family Family Ties, right? That's the name of the show. Family Full House. Full House. Excuse me. So I had the wrong program too. There's ding, two ding. of them. God, I don't have enough alcohol. Yeah, jeez. I it's not just me getting the. Uh, by the way, folks, the uh, the new hashtag at uh, Green Room uh, Radio is uh, Drinky Drinky Time Ding Ding. And uh, <laughs> that refers to how horrible I am at uh, either pronouncing things or getting the name right. Cause hey, don't get into Hey, don't leave your co-host out. He's pretty horrible at pronouncing names as well. Well, I don't know. Uh, Willie's Comedy Club would have a tendency to disagree. All right. Now, but really, the truth is, is... They would go see Bob Saget, expecting to see that nice dad, and you know he's he's using the c word, but like in the first three sentences, they said he used to stream out of his shows like ants sometimes. I've heard that, and uh, yeah, well, well, you get what? 
I heard him on Denver radio saying, look, understand you are not going to see the guy. I mean, he tried to warn them. I give him credit. So, all right, let's get into the, uh, what episode is this, uh, Mr. Uh, Walker? This would be 450. Wow. Big 450th episode, folks. 50 more to go to 500. And I didn't get exactly all the uh, tweets in, but I'm pretty sure that um, Super Listener Scott Walker was somewhere around 36 tweets. And I'm sure I was under 10. So once again, Super Listener Scott Walker, SGF Scott 11, uh, beats out at Green Room Radio on live tweeting. Uh, you know, I have to have some goal in life to attain or I don't feel complete. I will say this. Uh, most of your most of your tweets tonight were uh, not of a negative nature, so I have to no. give you credit. You were not yeah. hammering on these poor guys. No, I was not. I I was in a pretty good mood. I mean, it was a good show outside of Jay Leno and the opening skit. Well, I I thought first of all, I thought Jay Leno was fine. Uh, unfortunately, you know, you saw a lot of forced laughter at the table. And when I say forced, I would say more along the lines of nervous and, look, this is what they want us to do. If Jay says something funny, we think we all have to laugh. So I think you saw something a little bit forced. But uh, I, I take exception with him telling people that uh, it you can have nights where it's the audience. I very firmly believe that it's never the audience. If you're having a bad night, it's you. You you don't match the audience, but that doesn't mean the audience is bad. Yeah, you're not adjusting your stuff. Right, exactly. And I've said this many times. You know, if you're in front of a, a crowd of drunk, uh, drunken sailors and uh, ranch hands, the other half is ranch hands, and they're all drunk, and you're up there trying to do material about how cute babies are, well you better adjust because they're not going to like it. And if you can't adjust, that doesn't make them bad. That just means you haven't had that experience yet and know how to figure out how to walk into that room, take control of it, make it your own, and make them love you. I mean, honestly, Mary Mack, who didn't make it onto this show, I've said this, I've talked about this incident many times. I watched her go in, small voice, sat down, at this place uh, that was, it's out of, the place is out of the Squire is what it's called in Denver. Nobody's listening. Everybody's got their back turned, loud as hell. She pulls out a mandolin and in this little squeaky voice starts singing, You Shook Me All Night Long by ACDC, playing the mandolin. And there was not a person in that room after probably 30 to 45 seconds that was not listening to her and loving her. Hmm. That's interesting. Not many people could do that, but she knows how to make her shit work. That's my point, and that's why Jay, Jay Leno, with all due respect, who certainly is way more famous than I am and is way more successful in his comedy career than as I am, that's just a bullshit excuse to say it's the audience. All right, let's go on to the sets. We had some good comedy tonight. Joe Mackey had a really good set. Uh, I did notice what Keenan noticed, which he does seem to be not as awkward, which I think could hurt him later on down the road. Do you think it's because he's getting more comfortable with the environment of being on TV? That could be it. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it that's probably it. But his character seemed to be working, but I've never seen him in a club environment. I should probably look him up and find some clips of him online. But when I see when I saw him on like uh, Red Eye, he had a very, very much uh, his character was very much like the one he was doing in the Invitationals. Now he seemed to be just like Keenan said, just a little more relaxed, and he kind of lost that stilted piece to him. The other thing about Joe, Joe, Joe Mackey, which I really like, which very few guys can get away with, the dude has no segues. 
his stuff is not connected. And no, for him to it pull goes, it off, it, it's freaking great. Yeah, no, and I that works for him. I mean, yeah, he was he was bouncing all over the place, and I was keeping up with him. Right, because you just want to honestly, you just want to hear what the guy's saying because he he is pulling out some really great comedy. I had to laugh when he said he's the underdog. He's not the underdog in this thing. He and he never has been the underdog in this thing. He may he may need that in his own head, but I'm telling you, if you're listening, Joe Mackey, you you have never been the underdog in this. Maybe you were the underdog the day they picked you and sent you the actual invitation to come out to L.A., but the minute you opened your mouth on stage, you ceased to become the underdog. I would agree. All right, next guy up, Rodman, who, uh, uh, super listener Scott Walker, declared the set of the night. Um, you know, I would say he was pretty close. It, it was either him or Nicky Carr. Uh, but excellent, excellent set. The uh, drinking game tonight. I had babies, or you could could probably say baby or babies. It was the second word. Or it was like in the first sentence and never stopped. Yeah, well, I figured that out from the little clip. Yeah, as they were going to to commercial, and I uh, yeah, baby or babies, whatever. It's all the same thing. I was like, oh, here it comes. Oh yeah, uh, and you know he. Like they said, he kind of makes it work. He's got it. And I give him credit for this. His style is his own. I've never seen anybody else really be able to do that rehashing of the word that he does so well. Yeah, I hate to say it. It's kind of growing on me that uh, if uh, I ever saw him at a club close, that's relatively speaking to where I live, uh... I would probably go see him. Well, Gabriel Rutledge, host of the Rutledge's podcast, he worked with him uh, once or twice, said the guy kills in the clubs. So I had to laugh, though, that, that that one thing I mentioned on yesterday's Green Room, that he was advertised as a storyteller. I don't see that as storytelling. But that I would is, say no. he's more of a modified ranter, actually. He's more ranting than he is anything else. That's a, that's a very good way to put it, yeah. He's a ranter. Yeah, and, you know, I will say that i got to give Roseanne credit. Beyond the stupid screaming that she does instead of clapping ah, or whatever. Ah. Right, she sounds like the w- Wicked Witch of the West when she's melting. Um, she did point out that his style is his own, and, and i got I, I got to give her credit for that, although somebody probably told her. Say that, Roseanne. Um, let's go to your guy. Uh, it's if I had if I had the funeral music I would have played that as he was on stage. I like Rocky. I know that you guys may think I hate him or Scott may think I hate him, but the problem with Rocky tonight was the dude looked like he was working at a club and he was settling in to do forty five. He just uh, it's like every time he goes up there. It seems like he's working to establish his character instead of just blasting off with what it is he's going to do. Yeah, he's just really low energy. I mean, you have got to be prepared to pay attention uh, when he's he's there. Yeah, he did look awkward in that big environment in that theater. He didn't look awkward to me. He looked like he was doing a club set. He was He was looking the room. Like you do when you do a club set, instead of looking like, if you if you take a look, I don't know, if you watch the set, you'll see him working the left, the right, the center. He was working like a club, you know, hand on the mic, stand, that kind of stuff. That's what he knows, and there's nothing wrong with that. But in this environment, not going to carry you forward. Uh, he didn't get any really big laughs until the very end because the whole... Uh, my dad told me you didn't see nothing, you didn't do nothing, you don't rat on anybody, however it is he put that. When he asked about the Kennedy assassination, I didn't do it. That was fantastic. That was, was a hilarious. great joke. And, you know, look, Rocky Laporte is a good comic. I, probably, if you're going to see somebody in a club, he's probably the guy to see. Of those, of those five, I would put him and Rodman, or... Um, um, Joe Mackey at the top. 
to see. I would order them that way because you can settle in with Rocky and get a lot of extra laughs out of him once you're in his uh, character. Same thing with Joe Mackey. I mean, he's just going to bang, 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 bang through the whole thing. But, you know, for what he had tonight, it just wasn't there. Yeah, I guess when I say awkward, uh, to me, when I say awkward, it just, he looked like he was in a different environment. Like like you say, he was working it as if he was in a smaller club. Yeah. And to me, it was just, you know, he didn't look like he should have been there. No, well, yeah. And honestly, if he, if he would have not... If he would have not gone, if he would have gone home last week and Carlos Miller was there, I can tell you Lachlan Patterson probably would have gone home this week. Because yeah, he it, had the second light, said, which we will get a, get to in a minute. Yeah. Um, Nikki Carr, you know, the crowd just loved her. Did she had, of everybody that came out, she had the biggest applause break. When she came out, people love her. Um, her her stuff, great energy through the whole thing. Her bit her bit about the uh, Mary and Jason was freaking genius. I just loved it. I didn't. I just, she just doesn't do it for me. I mean, it was funny, but. I don't know. Maybe I'm just going along because I hear the crowd laughing. Dude, I I tell you, you know, I thought she, uh, I, I thought she killed it. I really did. I think that she had, uh, you know, I I know they didn't judge it this way, but honestly, uh, if Rodman, I, it, the top three of the night were her, Rodman, and Joe Mackey, of course, but she, you could argue she had one of the, she had the strongest set. You could argue, you could argue any three of those guys did, but I really she may have had the strongest set of night. Really, the, the serial killer, a movie serial killer, a, a bit. That, that's really great. Uh, horrible, horrible Dracula impression. Yeah, yeah, really. she was doing yeah. voices. Yeah, I tweeted out that uh, you know, it was a sarcastic tone that she was doing voices better than DC Benny. Yeah. But here's the uh, here's the key. You heard the uh, you heard the supposedly off camera remark. I mean, that's that little thing where there there wasn't off camera, but you know when the judges are talking between before they go to commercial. Yeah. Uh, Keenan Keenan Ivory way and said what I've been saying all along. All along, you could put her on any sitcom, and she would do well. Mark my words. That is one of the things that NBC is looking at. Because they've never had anybody that's really done anything. That's what makes her a front runner right now. Yeah, and I think you know Rodman too. I mean, I, I don't know. I, a new age uh, Sanford and Son, maybe. I don't, I don't see that. He, I don't see Rodman having that kind of appeal. Okay. I really don't. Uh, I see Joe Mackey having it. Uh, I see Nikki Carr having it. And like I said, I, Lachlan Patterson, who we'll go to here next, uh, you know, he's got the good-looking guy thing. So he's got something. But of all of them, of the four that are left, Rodman has the least amount that I think would appeal to a, to a, uh, to a sitcom audience because, eh, you know, it's just, what is he going to do? Run around and yell one word? Every uh, every episode of the sitcom he's in, and I don't mean that it disrespectful to him, because what he's doing is working. But it doesn't. It I don't think it translates into a sitcom. Yeah, and and doing some research on Nikki Carr, she has been in now. Uh, I use this loosely movies. Uh, she's been I think three or four movies, so she does have some acting ability or credits to her. Well, good for her. honestly, I good for her. I think she's, uh, I think she's, I think she's doing well. So let's go to Lachlan Patterson. Look, I like Lachlan's material. Uh, the fact that you know he was hammering on the whole wedding thing with, you know, what am I going to do? Uh, how am I going to get out of this thing this far in advance? And all of that stuff was good. It, his problem was tonight. He seemed a little bit off of his game, and I don't know 
why that was. I couldn't, I, you know, usually I can kind of put my finger on it, you know, what it is they're doing. But his his material I thought was good, but somehow or another his delivery was not where it'd been before. Yeah, it wasn't uh it wasn't flowing. It seemed like he was having in his brain he was flipping through the pages of his set going, Oh, there it is, there it is and you know, and then it was coming out. Well, whatever it was, I mean it it, it almost got him knocked off, but fortunately for him, when he when he did get the punchlines out, he was getting big laughs. Yeah. So and he just it was stu- it kind of just stuttered along. All right, I don't I think my final 3 are still the same. I think next week um who would that make go home next week? Lachlan. Lachlan. Did, but did yeah. I say my final 3 are Rodman uh Joe Mackey and Nikki Carr, is that my final three? Yeah, well, if you want to go with it, there it is. I think, honestly, I think that's my final three. I really do. I think Lachlan goes home next week. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it, yeah, I don't know. if Rodman's had a couple, you know, he did that head-to-head, and he was a little flat, but he won. Because he was going up, I forget who he went up against, but I don't know. I think you're, I think you're right, but I don't know. Well, here's Rot- the thing. Uh, look at Joe Mackey. The dude still got plenty of material. He didn't throw out anything that was, you know, iffy. Yeah. No. Yeah. He's still, uh, still rolling out the fresh, fresh jokes. And he's definitely he's definitely the one that has the toughest him and honestly I think I think here's the other thing about Lachlan Patterson. He may be running out of material. I mean he hasn't been at it as long as Joe Joe Mackey has. And he did did he do two challenges or one? He did two, I think. Who? Lachlan Patterson. He did one. Oh, he only did one? He only did one. Okay. Well, he still uh, Rodman didn't do any. Nicky Carr didn't do any. Mac, uh, Joe Mackey did two. No, Rodman was one of the first ones when they did three. Oh, that's uh, right. He, he did do one. Yeah, he did one. He was the very first head to head to head. But Lachlan was in the first one also, right? Was he? he? Yeah, and he did another one. So Lachlan's done two. Look, Lachlan's. I think I. I. You know, with all due respect to him, I think he's running out of out of the really hot stuff. I think he's done I think he's really done his best bits. And the truth is in this competition the the problem is you really have to go out with your guns blazing and do your best material and see how long you can hang in there. It's just you know the thing the reason that Joe Mackey's got a better chance to keep going than Lachlan Patterson does is Lachlan looks like a guy that's you know, you put him in a 45-minute set, you're, he's going to establish his character and he's going to kill all the way through. But a lot of his material probably requires you to have understood something prior to it. In other words, you know, you got to be flowing with him. Joe Mackey is just, he's kind of, he's not a one-liner guy, but like I said, without those segues, he can basically just keep cherry-picking through his, his uh, material and just keep spitting them out. Lachlan Patterson's got to figure out what's my next best bit. Where Joe Mac- uh, Mackey just has to go, well, let me get another 15 jokes that work all the time. Yeah. And his awkward silences and pauses, and I'm talking about Joe Mackey, work for him as well. He could just stand there awkwardly and get a laugh. Yes, indeed, he can. So, folks, I think what we're looking at is uh, Lachlan Patterson goes next week, unfortunately, because I like him, too. At first, I thought he was going to go all the way, but, man, he's he's digging deep. We'll know next week. We will know what he's got because he's going to have to come up with something good. And I don't know if we're actually – I think we're seeing them in their actual order, and I wonder if we are. I'd really like to know if we are truly seeing – them come out in the order that they're in. 
I wanted to tweet that, but I, you know, I knew that it was just a wasted tweet. Like, I, you know, like I could care less. But uh, yeah, I was wondering that myself if we were seeing them as the audience was seeing them. Because truthfully, if you if you think about it in the in the uh, in the in the in the sense, if if that was their true order, if it was Joe Mackey going up first, he's killing for a guy that's opening. I don't care if their audience is prepped and warmed up or not. The first guy out always has to struggle the most, and he is killing in the first spot. And Nikki Carr would end up being in the sweet spot, being, you know, third, and Lachlan having to close after falling three strong sets, you know, with a, with that lower energy. If that truly was where he at, was at, that also caused him a little bit of trouble. Well, I guess we could tweet to Rocky Laporte and ask him if that was the actual. Did we see the actual order? I bet you he would. Uh, yeah. Why don't you find us. out? Why don't we'll, we will task Super Listener Scott Walker with that, since uh, him and Rocky are good friends now. <laughs> right. Yes, we're tweeter buddies. All right. Well, listen, folks. Thanks very much for listening. Uh, we will be back uh, next Thursday with our regular show. And then Friday a.m., just like this one, we're going to do the uh, last Comic Standing After Show. Hope you have uh, saw some insight here. And uh, don't be afraid to pass it along to a friend. And we appreciate We'll thank you in advance for that. Thank you very much for listening. On behalf of uh, Super Listener Scott Walker and myself, we can't thank you enough and appreciate that you've uh, taken the time. And we only ask one thing of you. Please support stand-up comedy. It's what we both love. It's what I do. It's why I'm here. Uh, How do you do that? You go out this weekend and see it live. So do me a favor. uh, This weekend, go to a comedy club near you. Thanks for listening. It's the green room. It's the green room. Green room radio.